Hi everyone, this is Saptashi here and I welcome you back to our course on machine learning using Python. So we are in a hands-on session today and it is hosted in our regular Kaggle environment. Uh, so uh, this will be available as a public notebook and you can change the code and run your own experiments and learn. Okay. So uh, we have looked at a clustering algorithm named as expectation maximization technique. The expectation maximization technique is also called as a mixture modeling technique. So let us look at an example and understand what we mean by mixture modeling technique. So let's say uh, this red card actually denotes uh, you know, probability distribution of your data. Okay. So in this particular case, for simplicity, we have assumed we have only one dimension. So in that case, uh, you can think that this is actually combination of three individual distributions, okay, which are marked in blue color, all right. And uh, these all these blue distributions are normal distribution, which are also known as uh, Gaussian distribution. So actually, you can think that the data is generated from a Gaussian mixture model. So when you are trying to apply clustering, what you are trying to find out is that how many unique components are there in this red distribution. So as example, here there are three such distributions, right? And what we want to do is we want to find out what are the parameters of this three individual blue marked normal distributions. So let us look at what are the different tasks or questions we are going to focus today. So we are going to focus on what are the important parameters of expectation maximization or Gaussian mixture modeling in, in our psychic environment. We will look at an example of clustering using Gaussian mixture model where we will generate a data set particularly for Gaussian mixture model. We will study the effect of change in parameter of this Gaussian mixture model in that resulting cluster. We will look at how uh, clustering can be done on iris and finally we will look at a rough way to find the number of components in this mixture model. All right. So uh, before we get started, uh, you know, I just want to refresh some of the ideas. So essentially, we have discussed about univariate normal distribution. A univariate normal distribution is expressed in terms of two parameters. It's mean, which is mu, and it's standard deviation, which is sigma, right? While when we go to a, a bivariate or multivariate normal distribution, we express it in terms of mu and sigma, but here mu is the mean vector. So you have multiple distributions, right? So the mean vector will actually uh, actually consists of all the mean of these different features, right? And covariance matrix, which is denoted by big sigma, not small sigma, is a square matrix, which actually tells how your attributes are related how one attribute varies with each other okay so this is how the probability density function of a multivariate normal distribution looks like okay without going into too much of details just see that you know the sigma and mu these are the just two parameters you need to know to actually understand the generation of this data from this particular distribution okay now let's focus on the uh, parameters okay so the first parameter is n component or number of component so essentially how many probability distributions are mixed okay next is covariance type so as i said how much correlated they are so you know there are several se uh, several options like full tied diagonal spherical okay so you know if you assume full it is like every cluster has its own uh, covariance distribution or covariance metric which is the most general one on the other hand you have tied where you assume all of them have same covariance metrics okay all right so you can also specify a uh, number of iterations okay how many iterations this algorithm will run uh, 
then you can have how many initialization parameters you will have. Another important parameter is how do you initialize? So one of the best practices actually you apply k means to initialize the clusters, right? So this sounds interesting, isn't it? So we will see the result of you know setting it at k means in a later experiment, and uh, we we can have something like verbose which can be used to see how the clustering algorithm is converging. Okay, one of the most important parameters over here is the covariance type. And this is just a quick, uh, quick picture to tell you how it affects. Okay, so let's say you have data like this, right? So if you have you no know, spherical uh, covariance, so then the clusters that will be, uh, you know, that will come up is kind of spherical in nature, right? If you have diagonal, then you will have something like a, you know, elliptical shape. If you have something like tired, then you will see that all the clusters have very similar shapes, right? So tired will give you same size cluster, right? Whereas full is the most generalized one. So you can have non-circular shape. At the same time, the sizes also can vary, all right? Okay, so now let's look at an example how to cluster on a Gaussian mixture. So let's start by doing our regular housekeeping. We'll use the make blobs. If you remember, make blobs can be used to generate data from normal distributions. Okay. We use uh, we import numpy, matplotlib, and these colors are used merely to color different observations of different clusters in different color. Okay. So that's why you use this function called as vectorizer. So let's run this. All right, now let's go ahead and create sample data. So we are going to import make blobs and we are going to use this function. Uh, we are going to use a sample of 200. We are using a particular random state and then we are using standard deviations of 1.0, 2.5 and 0.5, right? So means are being picked randomly. Make blobs by default creates three Gaussian distribution. So let's run and understand how this has generated the data. Okay, so here is how the data looks like, all right? Uh, now, uh, you can understand that actually there are three clusters over here, okay? Now, let's see what happens if we run our Gaussian mixture model over here and see, uh, you know, how, how the results look like. So, what we are going to do is we are going to import mixture from sklearn and then we are going to initialize Gaussian mixture with uh, you know components as three as we know there are three clusters covariance type we are saying as tied uh, so meaning that every one of them have same covariance matrix and we are using max iteration is 100 and initialization parameter so how it will pick up the initial centers as random okay so after that we do a gmm.fit on the data and finally we predict to get the corresponding levels so let me run this, okay, and if we quickly try looking at this Y class, okay, so Y class will have values like 0, 1, and 2 representing what cluster they belong from, right? Okay. Now, if I just plot it and plot it in such a way that clusters from the, or observations from the same cluster are marked in the same color, then this is how we get the result. So, are you happy with the clustering? Okay, let us change a different random set and see the effect. Okay, so let me change this random state to 80 and then let's see the shape of the data. Okay, uh, probably this may be more difficult, but let's see what our algorithm does. So we do the same thing of initializing, fitting, predicting, and then let's plot it and see how my data looks like. Okay. So even here, it cannot actually find out how uh, the clusters look right, right? So at this point, you may be disillusioned and thinking, 
that oh then in reality expected maximization is not such a great algorithm as i talked about the parameter now let's look at the effect of different parameters okay so uh, this is what uh, you know we initially did right so let me change so this covariance type is given as tied right now okay uh, let's change this to full okay and let us just first change to max iteration equal to 10 and let's see what is happening okay yes so uh, you know it is giving an error that we are not getting good convergence in 10 iterations we may not get good convergence so let's plot and see how my data looks like okay so you will see that still there is some improvement okay you could at least understand that here is some clusters all right so let me do something let me change this to 100 and see if it can pick the clusters better now okay so let me run this again yes now if you see it has identified the clusters very nicely so what did we change we changed we first told that each cluster has its own covariance matrix by mentioning it as full and we just ran it for 100 parameters and it did the trick okay all right let's now go to the next experiment of using the iris data set okay and uh, we are using our usual purity measure for clustered evaluation so if you remember purity is a measure which varies between 0 to 1 so if you get a value of 1 that means you are getting a very very pure clusters okay so let me create this function this is not available directly in sklearn and then you know load our iris data from uh, from our data sets okay all right so let me quickly show you for those of you who are looking iris for the first time so basically uh, you know there are four features okay so this is an uh, np array okay of dimension 115 to 4 okay and uh, let me show you how, how y looks like so basically these are data about three variants of iris flower so you can see 0 1 and 2 okay so this is what your data is now uh, let's what we are going to do is we are going to run different versions of uh, this gaussian mixture and look at its effect Okay. and we are going to we are going to create two lists lab and pure we, where we are going to append that what method and uh, what method we have used and what is the purity value that we have got corresponding to that method and first we have started with components 3 and we are using covariance type is tied and max iteration is 10 and initialization parameter is random so let's run it and uh, let's we can look at how how the value we have got yeah 0 0.56 so again you might not be happy at all because you know as i said purity of one is what is desired now uh, let's run more experiments so here what we are going to do is we have changed this to 100 here in one experiment and then what we have done is we have changed uh, this to covariance type equal to full so here we are allowing each cluster to have different covariance type right and uh, we have used uh, still the initialization as random so let's run this this is getting added to the list okay uh, so it is giving a message that in 10 iterations you know it didn't convert so which is expected all right so now what we are going to do is we are going in, going to make it more generic right so we are going to make now covariance type equal to full all right and we are going to run on max iteration of 100 also what we are going to do is we are going to use one other thing where we will get the centers out of k means in 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 uh, using k means and then that will be used as my initial values all right uh, 
so let's run both of this okay the purity is getting calculated uh, the labels also I'm adding to the list finally we'll plot it and finally let's also apply k means right and see how uh, we are getting purity in this case okay so let's run this and now let's let's what we are going to do is we have created first a dictionary where we have you know the key as the labels and then this purity values as the values and now uh, we have actually created a data frame out of the dictionary and finally we have plotted it using a horizontal bar okay so this is how it will look like so you can see that k means is so what is the what has the highest value the highest value comes when you are initializing with k means you are using a full covariance metric and you are using 100 iterations right and so so all other cases you can see so this is the picture representation if you want to look at the actual value let's just you know use this data set which is df let's just look at df how it looks like you know and this is how your df looks like so using this k means initialization we are getting a purity value of 0 0.96 it is very very impressive and all kind of clustering algorithms that we have probably seen we have never got a uh, classification a, a purity of you know more than 0 0.91 or 92 okay so that's the beauty of gaussian mixture modeling that you can achieve excellent uh, performance out of the clustering however you need to be very very sure about the parameters you are using now like for k means you need a way to find out how many clusters are there same question in case of uh, your Gaussian mixture modeling or expectation maximization gets converted to how to determine number of components. And you don't have a sum of square error here because you don't have essentially a center. So what we are going to use is something called as BIC. So I'm not going into the intricate maths of it, but like, you know, most of the, uh, most of the loss functions or objective functions, so there is one function which is the likelihood, the second part, which, which essentially tells you how nicely your data fits the model, okay? And the second one is actually on the complexity of the data. How many data points you are using, how many clusters you have got, so it is on, on the basis of that. So it has a nice regularization feature. So what we are now going to do is on the same iris data, okay, what we are going to do is, we are going to run this algorithm. So we'll, we'll vary n components from one to 15 with a range of two. And then we are uh, we are building model, we are initializing Gaussian mixture, okay, uh, with this value of n, okay. And then we will plot the BIC value corresponding to each one of them. So lower the BIC. So BIC is something you always want to minimize, lower the BIC, you know, the better the number of clusters are, okay? Okay, so if you run this, you know, you will see that indeed, you know, the BIC is at, uh, BIC is minimum at three. You already know that there were three natural clusters uh, you, you in, in iris. So BIC actually tells that or understands that perfectly. Before we close today's session, I'd like to talk about some other important things which will probably serve as your urge to do some more studies. So first is uh, instead of your direct Gaussian mixture, you have something as a variational inference, which is an extension. It, it, it first of all adds a regularization, okay? And uh, this has also more hyperparameters than expectation maximization. So one of the most important parameter is called as concentration parameter, okay, uh, which is denoted by weight underscore concentration underscore prior. So if you have a low value, then what will happen is, so if, let's say, you know, you are, uh, you are uh, having, let's say five component. So if you have a low concentration prior, then some of, will, some of them will only have high weightage and in, and the others will have a 
less weighted. And if you have a high value of the concentration, then, you know, uh, like the mixture will be well distributed. So one of the purposes of using this as low concentration is that you can play around with the number of components. Okay. So, you know, if you use normal Gaussian mixture, okay, uh, so then what can happen is that if you have a data like this, it will probably go ahead and identify four clusters, right? Uh, however, if you use variational inference, which allows you to, you know, uh, use some other advanced uh, priors like directly, you can get shapes like this so it can identify this to come from one cluster right so uh, to sum up expectation maximization is a fantastic algorithm if you can play around with parameters however you know as you move from gaussian mixture model to more complex models so it will have higher parameters and as a result the convergence may be slower there is a lot to read about this so I highly encourage you go ahead and read more. And if you have your question, please feel free to add to our uh, video section and do like and subscribe if you have enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching guys.